Well, for more on the continued fallout in Australia from the resources rent tax, I'm joined by Jonathan Barrett, Managing Director with Commodity Broking Services. Good morning, Jonathan Barrett. Welcome to Business good, Today. Good morning, Whitney. Now, as we just heard complaints about the new tax on resources companies, mm. they don't seem to be diminishing. Globally, mm. is this damaging to Australia's reputation? Whitney, look, I think it is. I think people are concerned because a lot of, a lot of the miners are basically turning around and sort of cutting productions, as we've seen. Um, there's a lot of negative news which is coming out of it. So I think overall it is damaging. I think the countries such as Canada at the moment are sort of, you know, sort of you know, clapping their hands really at this sort of an outcome because it, more, it means that more people will pour more resource into their resource sector uh, rather than Australia. So would you say that it's likely that there will be long-term negative impacts here or, or are these just, you know, teething problems? Mm. Winnie, I think at the end of the day, it's like any tax. You do get, uh, get used to it over time, even though it is imposed. But I think with this particular one and the way it's been um, um, portrayed, I think it's actually more damaging to the government um, uh, of the old government at the moment because I think it's more of a concern from that side because it's proven to be so unpopular. I mean, if you think about it, everyone that has a superannuation has basically taken, uh, you know, a pay cut. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the government where Australia is in an election year. Politically, mm. the plan to rob Peter to pay Paul doesn't seem to be really paying off in the popularity stakes, does it? Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's the whole idea. That's the problem because I don't think it was well thought, thought through. Uh, just taxing one uh, part or one sector of the economy that happens to be going very well. And, and I think we really need to see some concrete um, evidence from the government to say, well, look, this is what it is or this is what it won't be. I think in light of the current concerns we've got, particularly in Europe, I think you might find that the government might decide to actually uh, backpedal a bit on it. But uh, let's see how it goes. But at the moment, I think it's more damaging uh, having it out there with no concrete thing than actually having it. And, of course, in the contrarian position, there are those critics that are opposed to the tax, uh, saying that, you know, or uh, critics of those that are opposed mm. to the tax, saying that, you know, it really won't do that much damage. So could there be positives here? Um, we're not, I, I don't think so. I think that it's not going to do a lot of damage to those large uh, mining companies that are owned offshore, you know, like your BHPs and your Rios. Where I feel it'll do the most damage are those very small companies those 100% owned and operated miners who, who are looking to, for more exploration, are looking to create more wealth internally and where the profits actually stay in Australia. So I feel it'll be those companies, those miners, which will be the ones which will be hurt the most, not as much those bigger companies like the BHP and the Rios, where I think it's just an additional tax. All right, Jonathan Barrett, let's look at oil. Now, it jumped off the back of the EU rescue plan. Is this temporary or will demand increase now that its perceived stability has returned? Whitney, I think it, I think it actually, oil has that ability now to really start to move. We've corrected from close to 87 US dollars a barrel down to 75 US dollars a barrel. And that's, that's been a very, very corrective move for oil. And I think the EU plan to help uh, with the sovereign concerns will only increase that demand because what it'll do, it'll placate any concerns on economic growth and you'll find that people will get back on that bandwagon of economic or global economic growth and as a result of that I think oil will start to trend higher. Some say that OPEC may be overproducing. Do you think it's likely they'll curb production? Uh, not, not at the moment. OPEC always work outside their quotas and, and we, we know that for a fact. But I think that uh, they require more US dollars or more revenue for the sale of their produce. So I think we won't see a lot out of OPEC at the moment uh, concerning production cuts or quota cuts, unless, of course, oil does come under pressure and probably trade back through that US $70 a barrel. All right. Now, can you just tell us, uh, looking at gold, it has fallen off the back of that rescue package. Is that just a slight dip or is it likely to trend lower? Well, gold, gold has been really interesting, Whitney, because uh, we traded as high as 12.10 and then last night we had a drop to 11.86. Now, we've actually come all the way back this morning to around about 12.02. So there is some other factor which is sort of supporting the price of gold at the moment. Um, and I think it, that sort of it bodes well, I guess, for the way our equity markets will open today because that gold price really hasn't behaved the way we would have expected it to behave. All right. Unfortunately, Jonathan Barrett, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks for your time today. Thanks, Whitney.